What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate, reverse rants, no hate. So, I gotta say this and make this video because I have to address the idiots that love to talk and run their mouth and don't know shit. So, basically, here's what happens. People don't understand fact versus opinion. So, let me just give you guys something. So, basically, right, I made a comparison in the video about Canelo fighting John Ryder and nobody knowing who John Ryder is. But at the same time, Canelo Alvarez, out of his own mouth, says a guy like Demetrius Andre is a horrible fighter. He's done nothing. A horrible fighter. You guys all heard the same thing. You saw the press conference when Demetrius Andre and his dad came in there and Canelo was saying he's done nothing. Canelo went on record and said, David Benavidez has done nothing. He's only beat one champion. He Okay? He sat there in an interview and he asked him about, about fighting David Morrell. And he goes, who? As if he doesn't know who David Morrell is. When we all saw the video, at least I know I saw what he was talking to David Morrell. Shaking his hand and everything. But sat there and act like he didn't know who David Morrell was. Okay, so you guys who sit here and you have his manhood so shoved down your throat so far that it, it, it somehow loops up and punctures your brain on top of that. You say stupid things to try to defend your favorite fighters. So, let me make you all look stupid with your own fucking words. Some idiot in the comment section goes, oh, what are you talking about? What do you mean who did our writer beat? He earned his shot by beating fucking who? When have you ever heard anybody say, I want to see David Benavidez versus John Ryder. I want to see David Morrell versus John Ryder. I want to see Canelo Alvarez versus John Ryder. When have you ever heard that? Show me one fucking content creator talking about John fucking Ryder. The only time his name is being mentioned was this is the opponent Canelo's fighting. Most content creators say they don't even know who the fuck John Ryder is. Most content creators said we had to go look at video to see who this guy was. Just like Ismael Barroso that just fought Rowley. Who the fuck knew who he was? So now, right, this guy O'Hara Davies, this guy O'Hara Davies is calling out Raleigh Romero. Raleigh Romero's response was, Nobody even knows who this guy is. Me and Ryan is an important fight. Nobody knows who, who O'Hara is. Okay, O'Hara Davies dropped you with a body shot. Disrespected you, talked all of this shit, right? And you don't want to fight him. Okay, cool. Well, nobody knew who Barroso was either. So the same way you saying nobody wants to see that fight because no one knows who O'Hara is. Well, nobody knew who, who, who this guy uh, uh, Barroso was. But you took that fight. It was your first fight. At 140 and it was for some bullshit title Now you sat in the press conference And somebody questioned Raleigh Romero And said how is it that you can You know go to 140 Like your first fight for a championship And what do you say well, I guess I'm special man You know, you look as good as I do I mean I got I got privileges and advantages He says that Now even though he's smiling he's damn serious You tell me how it happened You tell me that That, that guys don't have Some type of strings being pulled for them how does Joe Joyce beat Daniel Dubois? But Daniel Dubois is the one with a bullshit title shot. Ex explain that. Huh? The loser gets the title shot, not the winner. So when we tell you boxing has no structure, the shit is all over the place, you guys agree to certain shit as long as it's not exposing or pointing out the facts and the truth about your favorite fighter, which I can give a shit about. So reality is... The same way you can say nobody knows O'Hara Davies, yet nobody knew who the fuck this old man was and people didn't even believe he was only 40 years old. And he was beating your ass and got stopped. So at the same time, right, you took that fight. You didn't say, hey, look, man, nobody doesn't know who this guy uh, uh, Barroso is. Give me somebody better than that. Give me somebody. Give me Regis Prograde. You didn't say that, did you? No, you took the fucking fight. So even though Canelo's mandatory was John Ryder, it just further proves my fucking point. But some of you are too fucking stupid to understand. No different from fucking 
Did Dominic Brazil do any fucking thing to become Deontay Wilder's fucking mandatory? Tell me who the fuck Dominic Brazil beat. Tell me why the fuck he was a mandatory. Tell me why Bermain Stavern, who hadn't fought in like two fucking years, and the last time he fought was against a C-class fighter, got dropped and looked horrible, somehow became Deontay Wilder's fucking mandatory. But when you point that out, oh, why are you hating on Wilder? Fuck that and fuck you. Tell me why Tyson Fury has had this belt as long as he's had and never, ever, ever has a mandatory challenger. Tell me why. Tell me why you have people ranked in the top fucking five, the top 10, who's never fucking done shit. You had, I remember fighters who haven't even fought. What's this fucking guy Tyson Fury was going to fight? Manuel Char was ranked number fucking four and hadn't fought in three fucking years. They pay sanctioning fees, dumbasses. Okay? The ranking systems ain't shit. So now when it comes to your mandatories and you're deciding you're too good to fight your mandatory, no, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. It's high risk, low reward for a lot of these guys and you get the trashy fucking no good fucking uh, 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 mandatory challenges, but you don't turn those fights down. Why? Easy money. So yeah, I'm aware, asshole, that John Ryder was his fucking mandatory, but it's my fucking point. Who the fuck did he beat to become the mandatory? All of you were saying Caleb Plant doesn't belong in the ring with Canelo. He's trash. He's garbage. I'm saying, nah, that's bullshit. Caleb Plant is far from garbage. But for him to beat Canelo, he's going to have to be at his best and he can't get tired because as soon as he does, that's when Canelo's going to chip him up. Ain't that exactly what the fuck happened? As soon as he starts getting tired, that's when he falls apart. That's when he becomes easy to hit, when his hands stop moving. And at the end of the day, Canelo has always, like, he shows that patience. He'll walk you down, walk you down until he gets you. He has the kind of power at 168 that, hey, guess what? He's a, he's a good puncher, so basically, he'll chip you down. When he knocked out Kovalev, everybody said he, he's great. This guy's in a, from a different stratosphere. Isn't that what everybody was saying? Yeah, I know, because I see the comments in my comment section. But as soon as he got beat by Beeble, oh, he's too small for 175. Now, that's a fact that you motherfuckers are the ones typing this dumb shit. So he's not too small for, 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 for Kovalev, but he's too small for Beeble. Aren't they all fighting at 175? Bullshit excuse. Now, because you like getting on your knees for other for, 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 for Canelo and other men, that's your business. I'm telling you flat out. You can't blame the fighter. Just like you can't blame Riley Romero for what the referee did against um, Barroso. But again, like I said, the amount of shit he talks, it makes him look bad. Why? Because he's sitting up here calling out all these names. What sense does it make? I'm going to 140. You go to 140, then you, oh man, I'm going to 147. It's going to be easier for me to fight at 147. Then all of a sudden you call out Tank Davis that fights at 135. So when I bring these things to people's attention that it makes no sense and the guy is just basically running his mouth. It's, it's called hate now. I care what you call it. I'm going to say what I want to say. So at the end of the day, what I'm telling you makes all the sense in the fucking world. I don't give a fuck about you disagreeing with facts because the facts is I'm repeating what these guys are saying and doing. And in terms of who they beat, how the fuck can you sit up here and say Jamal Charlo beat nobody? Jamal Charlo beat nobody. Oh, uh, 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 Demetrius Andre beat nobody. Oh, really? So you telling me that John Ryder has a better resume than those three guys I just named? Aren't you the same fucking people that sat here and said, yo, they robbed um, the Reverend Yanchenko when he fought against um, Triple G. And they robbed him because they was trying to make that fight happen between Triple G and Canelo. And that's why they robbed him. But Triple G, he lost that fight. Yo, I respect the Reverend Yanchenko. The Reverend Yanchenko is a true warrior. Then all of a sudden, he goes in there. He fights against Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo beats him pretty, pretty easily. Oh, big deal, Jamal. You be the guy coming off of a loss. That's you motherfucking crying bitches. So miss me. Stay the fuck off my channel with that bullshit. Because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Then you overlook this kind of shit. I 
Isaac Pitbull Cruz fights against Javante Tank Davis. Oh, uh, man, so what? He beat a guy smaller than him. Oh, uh, he's a C-class fighter anyway. Nobody knows Pitbull Cruz. These are comments that I'm reading, not only on my channel, but on other channels. Like fight hype. Like seconds out. Like Ellie set back. Look at the comments. And then what y'all say in, in, in Pitbull Cruz's very next fight. Yo, this guy's a fucking beast, yo. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yo, I respect. Same name, same fucking people. And guess what? Just one fight ago, he was a C-class fighter. So since he fought Javante Tank Davis, he became an A-plus class fighter overnight, huh? Because now he's a fucking beast. Huh? The Reverend Chenko was a beast, although he got robbed. Okay? In the Triple G fight. But when he fought Charlo, all of a sudden, he's a bum. Y'all did the same shit with Jojo Diaz. Jojo Diaz, he loses to Devin Haney. Oh, man. Yo. This guy, Jojo Diaz, is a C-class fighter. Big deal. He ain't nobody. Jojo Diaz, very next fight. Yo, this guy's a beast. And this is fucking facts. And I see a lot of you hopping from channel to channel to channel. You don't produce content. All you do is go on from channel to channel and just leave comments. And you motherfuckers that sit here and talk about Jojo Diaz is a beast. Oh, but he wasn't a beast when he fought Haney. No, it's not the fact that Haney is just that much better than him. No, it's the fact that he was a bum when he fought Haney. Same way, motherfuckers was talking about Charles Martin's a bum. So AJ beating him meant nothing. And the same fucking people when it was that big rumor that came out that Deontay Wilder was going to fight Charles Martin. You motherfuckers, oh, that should be a good fight. Yeah, Charles Martin's a good fight. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You always calling him a bum. Now, all of a sudden, without him doing anything, a win over fucking Gerald Washington or some motherfucker like that, lost to Adam Kalnaki. I mean, Charles Martin is now all of a sudden he's a good fighter without showing you anything. Every excuse that you guys make, you contradict yourselves all the fucking time. John Ryder, I remember Connor Ben speaking about him and talking about how hard he works in the gym. How he's such a good stand-up guy, like like a good guy in life and all of that. Yeah, that's all well and good. It doesn't change the fact. Example, okay? Robert Hellenius, it was said he was Deontay Wilder's uh, uh, um, um, title eliminator opponent because he's on a three-fight winning streak. So you're telling me that Wilder, who's coming off of two back-to-back -back losses... Right? Beating Robert Hellenius, that warrants him to be in title contention because he beat Robert Hellenius. Well, hey, he was his he was the guy that who selected him. On the sanctioning body. So you got a guy like Frank Sanchez, undefeated. He couldn't fill that void. A guy like Jared Anderson, undefeated. He couldn't fill that void. Hell, I'd have rather seen F.A. Ajaba versus Wilder than fucking Robert Hellenius. A journeyman. A fucking journeyman. Most people feel like the fight was fixed. A lot of people, you know, the Wilder diehards are saying, yo, he just hit that hard. Oh, Wilder's, yeah, okay, right. Now check this out. People said Jared Anderson fight guys that's much smaller than him. I agree with that. I've seen him fight some little guys. I want to see him step up in competition, but he's undefeated. You only, it's only said you're on a winning streak because you lost already. Jared Anderson and Frank Sanchez will smoke Robert Hellenius out of his fucking boots. And you're telling me you'd rather see Robert Hellenius versus Wilder? Instead of Wilder versus a Jared Anderson or Frank Sanchez? The only reason why you would want to see that is because Robert Hellenius is an easier win. So because you fanboys, you little boys, little fanboy kids want to run your mouths about your favorite fighters, that shit doesn't affect me. But see, the shit that you guys are talking, you make yourself look stupid. And without having to Google some shit, not one of you motherfuckers can sit here and tell me nothing about who he beat and how the fight went and why he earned his shot. How the fuck did he earn his shot? I don't even remember the guy's name. 
But some years ago, they did a poll, and they the fans did not want to see Canelo fight this particular fighter. I don't remember the motherfucker's name. Okay, Chris Eubanks Jr., who has been crucified and considered a trash fighter, beat this same guy and pretty soundly. Nobody on this planet thinks Chris Eubanks Jr. would have a chance in hell against Canelo Alvarez and say that this guy is trash. That's what they were saying about Chris Eubanks Jr. He's hype. He's a hype job. He's living off his father's name. Okay, guess what? That same fucking guy that nobody wanted to see Canelo fight ended up being Canelo's mandatory. And Canelo went in and destroyed the guy. The guy did not belong in the ring with Canelo Alvarez in the first place. So because a sanctioning body appoints someone as a mandatory, right? That doesn't make them a good fighter. Example, I saw this guy, O'Hara Davies. I never even knew who the fuck he was. When I saw the tweet, I went and started watching the fights that they have of him. And like I said, you know, he like he can do a little something. Did you hear me say he's a good fighter? Did you hear me say he's a great fighter? Did you hear me say he's a talented fighter? No. I said like he can do a little something. Because I actually he got something like he got a little punching power. But he has his flaws. Did I not say that? So the point is, if you accept one mandatory, okay, because you know it's an easy win. But now here's another mandatory, but it's nobody knows him. We know that this guy, um, um, Barroso, wasn't a mandatory. But Raleigh, who just got knocked out by Tank Davis, had some strings pulled, go to 140, and his first fight is for a vacant WBA bullshit belt. O'Hara Davies, who's already been there, they feel like they got blackballed. Now, let's say, yeah, because they've been there and didn't get that shot. Now, let's say he fights Raleigh and loses. So what? So what? He's his mandatory. He's his mandatory. But at the same fucking time, Raleigh's no superstar. Raleigh's not a world-class fucking boxer. Raleigh is a streaky guy that has potential, but he doesn't fucking have the fundamentals and the IQ. Everything with him is to rely on power. He looked horrible in that fight with this guy. And this, do you fucking think they put him in there with a 40-year-old unknown guy because they thought that this was going to be a tough fight for Raleigh? Do you think that? Do you think Raleigh's going to say, hey, look, man, this was a cherry pick to make me look good. But you have common fucking sense to know that that's what it was, right? They gave Canelo a 16 by 16 ring, and he still couldn't knock this guy right out. You could have a opponent, his mind is made up, I ain't going nowhere. It happens, yes. But it doesn't take the fucking fact away that this is a fight meant to have Canelo come back and look spectacular. And that's not what the fuck happened. So for you to open your mouth to defend John Ryder, asshole, show the fucking fights that he had, that he earned this spot. And oh, wait, wait. He earned it, but a guy like Demetrius Andre, a guy like Jamal Charlo, guys like that, huh? you rather see him fight John Ryder? You think if you put a fucking poll up and said, who would you rather see? Canelo Alvarez fight. John Ryder, huh? Jamal Charlo, Demetrius Andre, or David Benavidez. I will guarantee fucking to you, John Ryder gets zero. Nobody's voting to see that fucking fight. So shut the fuck up with all of that. He earned that. What are you talking about? Shut your goofy ass up. This guy didn't earn shit. He was appointed. All right? He was a fucking sacrificial lamb. But of course, you motherfuckers know better because you're fucking Canelo fans. Who the fuck was John Ryder? If Robert Hellenius, okay, earned anything and he was such a, vi a valuable opponent... What the fuck has he done since Wilder knocked him out? Andy Ruiz, who's a former fucking champion, got treated by Tyson Fury's camp like, nah, you're not worth the money you're asking for. Right? Did Tyson Fury not offer a 70-30 split to Alexander Usyk, who beat Anthony Joshua twice, but he offered AJ 60-40 split? That makes sense to you? 
So for everybody that came to the conclusion, Tyson Fury never wanted to fight Usyk. He never wanted to fight AJ. Where do we come to them conclusions from? From his hypocrisy, his actions, the things he say and fucking do. And right now, okay, Frank Warren is showing frustration trying to find a fight for this guy because he's so full of himself. Do you think I give a fuck about Canelo fans or Fury fans or AJ fans or anybody fans trying to... But Aries, what are you saying? Shut the fuck up. If he wanted those fights, they would have happened. Just like he and Wilder stood there when they were trying to blackball Anthony Joshua. See, when the best one to fight the best, it's easy to make these fights. Yeah, it's easy. Right. So what happened to that? Why is it so difficult to get a guy like Tyson Fury in the ring with these guys. And when Canelo made these bullshit excuses about not wanting to fight another fucking Mexican, if a black fucking fighter, if Floyd fucking Mayweather, if, if, if Jamal Charlo, any of them stood there and said, well, I don't want to fight against, um, you know, another black fighter because I'm black American and, and I represent black Americans. You be calling them a fucking racist and a fucking cherry picking ducker. You call them a ducker right now. And Jamal and Jamel, Jamal was calling him out when he was at 154. Jamal was calling him out when he was at 160. One is undisputed and the other is a champion, but they've done nothing, right? So when I say, what the fuck has John Ryder done? Stupid asshole. How many times was he a champion? Huh? Huh? How many weight classes had he been champion? What, what the fuck has he done? The question still stands. What has John Ryder done? Yeah, he had a fight that people feel like he was robbed in. Yeah, guess what? Canelo had fights. People people thought that Canelo lost to Austin Trout, that he lost to Laura, that he lost both fights against Triple G. So fucking what? Huh? Okay then. Excuses, he was too young when he fought Floyd. So now he goes and fights Bivol and lose, he's too small. You guys make these excuses up. So just like me saying, I believe he's going to wind up fighting Berlanga, not Bivol. Not Morel, not Benavidez. If the fucking fight happens, I don't need you motherfuckers to say you was right, Aries. But I'm gonna tell you what you what you sour motherfuckers are gonna do. Well, Belango's a good fighter. But Bel yeah, I know. You know, world beater Belango. I know he's better than everybody else. He's the best possible fucking option out there for Canelo. Look, Jamal Charlo was on the shelf because he was going through custody battle and all that shit that shit is over with now as far as i know and for him to come up to 168 whatever if he wants to do that whatever i don't expect canelo to go down to 160 okay so 168 175 that's where canelo's balance is okay didn't mauricio suleiman say didn't he say that canelo and lomachenko Requested to be Franchise champion It's a rhetorical question I'm not asking you because I know he said that shit And you know he said it He said being franchise champion It allows you to go up and down and wait To whatever weight class you want to fight Any champion you want Did Lomachenko use the franchise championship To go up and down and wait And fight in different multiple weight classes Did, did he use it for that? Huh? Did he? Because he was already fighting in the same weight class at 135. I know he came up in weight. But I'm saying, did, did he use that? To go? No, listen. He was already at 135. Okay, and that's how Devin Haney was his mandatory. So when he vacated his fucking belt, okay? When he vacated his belt to become franchise champion, he didn't need to do that. In order to fight Tiafimo Lopez. They were already in the same fucking weight class. You fucking morons. Okay? They were already in the same weight class. Now, if he offered Devin Haney step aside money. And said, hey. Take this money. Chill for a minute. I'm going to go over here and beat Tiafimo. And I'm going to be right back. No, he vacated his belt. And you got idiots talking about, oh, he went on to fight a better fighter. No, he didn't go on to fight a better fighter. Isn't he fighting that same guy right now? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. See how things happen? But it's handy giving him a fucking shot.
not the other way around. Now, if he would have used that privilege of going up in weight or going down to 126 or whatever, he said he wouldn't go back to 126. There's no need to. 130. He don't want those weight classes. No, he is here at 135. That came out of his mouth. He don't want to go back to these smaller weight classes. For what? So what was the purpose of him relinquishing his title? He didn't have to, yeah, you know, he 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 had to relinquish the title or get sued because I'm your mandatory. So you think that a champion is going to let his belt go because, oh, well, he won a legacy fight. Who the fuck is to say Tiafimo is better than Devin Haney? That's opinions. Until they fucking fight, that's just an opinion. You're going to give up your belt to go fight someone else. You know how stupid that fucking sounds? Do you know how stupid that sounds? So for the people saying, oh, he's an email champion. Well, guess who sent him the fucking email? But you guys don't bring that up. So when I bring up anything, I'm going to cover what's known and what we see it here come out these fighters' mouth and look at their actions. Fucking John Ryder. Man, get the fuck out of here. No fucking content creator is talking about no fucking John Ryder. The guy got his nose broke, got dropped twice. And he was fucking getting licks off on Canelo as well. Canelo didn't look good. Oh, no, nah, man. You got one guy talking about Canelo looks even better. You guys, man. I promise you, when he pull it out and zip his pants back up, y'all are going to fall on y'all face crying because y'all want it back in y'all mouth. I never seen you guys are such dick. And the thing about it is, you're proud of it. You guys are proud of it. You don't stand with your fucking two, uh, two feet planted to the ground. No, you guys are a bunch of idol worshiping, little soft, immature, don't know what the fuck you talking about type of people. That's what you are. Talk about what do you mean? Who's John Ryder for? Oh yeah, I asked you, asshole. Who the fuck is he beat? Nobody. He earned it. Right, Dominic Brazil earned that shot with Wilder. And the thing was, Wilder got the old, washed up, fucking, uh, uh, wear and tear damaged, no more good Dominic Brazil. Their history came from a fucking beatdown, or, or not even a beatdown, just the fact that they jumped the guy in front of his wife and kids. And Dominic Brazil wanted to get back in there and try to get revenge. Okay, no, it didn't go his way. Well, what the fuck did Dominic Brazil do? What did fucking Berman Stavern do? Huh? Same thing goes for Ryder. What the fuck did Ryder do? Nothing. Nothing. What did Manuel Char do to become ranked number four when that motherfucker hadn't fought in three fucking years? And Tyson Fury, let's go, motherfucker. Yeah, he was willing to fight this fucking guy. And you gonna make an excuse for that shit? Well, if you can say Tyson Fury was a sucker for that, well, hey. That's even worse because he wasn't his mandatory. But the point is, just because someone make you a mandatory does not mean that you earn jack shit. Look at how fucking long Dylan and White was supposed to be mandatory. Somehow, nobody holding that WBC strap was giving this guy shit, a, 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 a chance. And then Mauricio goes, oh, just because you're the number one doesn't make you mandatory. No, Mauricio Suleiman. You out of your mouth on several occasions said Dylan White has earned his shot with Wilder. John Ryder has no world-class victories under his fucking belt. In fact, it was funny because I said, wait, I didn't remember that I saw him fight Daniel Jacobs. And I saw him get his ass whooped by Daniel Jacobs. Simple. Simple. And I said, oh, okay, that's who the fuck it was. I, I remember the Daniel Jacobs fight. I just didn't remember who John Ryder was. When is the last time we heard anything from Daniel Jacobs? Okay. My fucking point. So what the fuck has John Ryder done? I don't give a fuck. The fighters he beat are not world-class level fighters. So he didn't earn shit. Okay? You dumb motherfuckers probably really believe Christopher Columbus discovered America. He didn't discover shit. He claimed it. If this motherfucker arrived in America and when he got to his location, there were already boats with slaves in them. Isn't that common fucking sense somebody was there before him? So no, 
No, he didn't discover America. He claimed that shit. Somebody was there before him, dumbasses. And that's not my opinion. That's a fucking fact. If somebody was there in slave ships, doesn't that mean they got there before him? He found them there. Y'all are programmed and manufactured to see shit a certain way. You ever fuck how you feel about another man? I need to man up. Sitting up here getting feelings, getting emotional. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. Yet you shoot down Charlo's resume who has some good wins on his fucking resume. Both of them. Benavidez. All these guys. Do they make the best career decisions? Not necessarily. But neither does Canelo. He's just way more popular than they are. So let's stop making these stupid ass excuses and running your mouth about what you don't know. So the whole point of all of that, when you have mandatory challenges and you don't fight them, because you're saying that these guys are nobodies, but then you're fighting guys that nobody knows. You're a hypocrite and you're a coward. When you can say a guy like Demetrius Andre is a horrible fighter and has done nothing, the same fucking way, the same fucking way John Ryder became a mandatory challenger. They could have said, fuck that. The only way we're going to get Canelo to fight against, you know, a guy like David Morrell or Benavidez. You mean to tell me that they, they should be mandatory? I mean, he, they shouldn't. You mean to tell me that? That John Ryder should be a mandatory over them? They, they they should actually be mandatory over them? What about, what about, think about it. What about John Ryder's resume, right? Whoever's on his resume. That's why nobody, who knows this guy? John Ryder would get this shit beat out of him if he fought Benavidez. Like I said, if he fought Morrell, he wouldn't beat Caleb Plant. All right, those guys would beat him. Charlo would be, all those guys would beat him. You tell me why David Morrell didn't get that nod over John Ryder. It's the sanctioning bodies. That's why you can look, just say under the WBA, and, and, and Wilder might be number two, AJ might be number fucking four. But then over on the WBO, you know, they might have AJ ranked over him. That shit don't mean nothing. Simple. If John, if if John Ryder had beat anyone, like when Dever, like when Deverianchenko was robbed in that Triple G fight, people was talking about that. Why? Because Triple G does have some notoriety, and people felt like, nah, there's no way in hell that Triple G won that fight. All right. Simple. Simple. Who have you heard talking about John Ryder and what he's done? All you know that this was a challenger. And again, like that poll that they had, who do you want to see Canelo fight? And that guy that 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 they tried to make him fight, because this was when they stripped Benavidez at 168. All right? This is when they stripped him. Canelo went all the way up to 175, and he fought Kovalev and had no interest in going and touching 168 until Benavidez was stripped. He went back down to 168. He fought that guy. And I said, ain't that some shit? Now they overrule Canelo fighting this guy just for this guy to end up being his mandatory without doing jack shit. What's this guy named that fought against Berman Stavern? Um, and it, over for that WBA bullshit belt, the one that Daniel Dubois has right now. Nobody cared about that fucking fight. And they did what? Fought for a vacant belt. They earned it. Now, you're going to sit here and tell me that Burmish Duvern should have been in that fight? And that guy he fought, who did all that talk and went in there and got annihilated by Daniel Dubois? They earned that shit? No. What did I tell you? They are fattening both of uh, these guys up. Whoever wins is being fattened up, and they're going to take a, 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 a more respectable fighter to wind up fighting and beating both. Uh, whoever win that fight, that's who they're fattening that person up for. 
Isn't that exactly what happened? Isn't that exactly what happened? So all of this shit about, oh, he earned his shot. You guys just say shit to try to make the fighter you like look good. That's all that shit is. Every fighter has been put in a situation where at some point when they face adversity, I need that comeback fight to look good. We watch Mike Tyson fight guys like Peter McNeely and Buster Mathis Jr. We watch Mike Tyson get annihilated by Danny Williams. Right? Who's a guy that also fought Klitschko and Klitschko beat him? We know this wasn't the same Mike Tyson. We know this. The question is, do you think when they gave Mike Tyson that guy, that they gave him a guy, that um, 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 Danny Williams, because they thought Danny Williams was some world beater? Nah. Nah. The guy that beat Mike Tyson afterwards, I don't remember his name, another unimportant dude. Do you know what Mike Tyson said at the end of that fight when that guy beat him? He said, I mean, I, I, I'm i only doing this for the money. I, I don't have a heart for this anymore. You know, no disrespect, but losing to this type of opposition. I'm not going to embarrass and disgrace the sport of boxing anymore. I'm just going to retire. I'm just doing it for the money. That's what Mike Tyson said. So he's acknowledging that this dude, okay, was not put in front of him because he was a threat. They tried to find the easiest guys that they could find for him. Same shit you see them doing with Adrian Broner. So I, I guess this guy that Adrian's about to fight, uh, yeah, he's a world beater too. We just don't know about him. No, they're trying to find the worst possible opponents that they could. How much lower can you go? All right? That's what this is for, to bring him back to try to make him look good. To try to attract the people to look at him again and, hey, we want to see him fight in a bigger fight now. That's what that is. Now, if Tyson would have won that fight, do you think Mike Tyson would have said, well, you know, this kind of opposition? No, he would have gave him credit. Well, you know, he's a good fighter. He's cagey. He, he was coming to fight and I respect. That's what he would have said, something like that. He wouldn't have fucking said, well, this guy should, I shouldn't be in the ring with this guy. This this this, this is the D-class fighter right here. I, you know, I, I just need it for the money. No. Try to build himself back up. And because Mike Tyson just completely lost it at that point, he had no choice but the, it, 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 he could have made excuses, but why? No. He did the, the right thing. Just be honest about it. And that's what he did. Canelo's situation is real simple. He looked bad against Triple G. Same thing. Triple G's washed up and people, you know how many people was in my comment section saying, I think Canelo is going to hurt him bad, man. I even thought that shit. Why? Because Canelo still was look, kind of looking the same as like from what we've seen him doing previous, previously. But Triple G, you can see slipped tremendously. Now, yeah, Canelo clearly won, but he couldn't get Triple G out of there. He couldn't knock him out. Couldn't get him out of there. Huh? All right, we got to do something else. We got to get him the right fight. Before he go into another big major fight, he need to go into it with momentum and looking good. So this, you know, the, the people are into it. He beat Caleb Plant. Good fighter. All right, good fighter. But he beats Caleb, and then he goes and fights Triple G. It looks bad. And what do they do? Huh? He said he hurt his hand, had surgery. Then he said his hand was better. Everything was fine. Everything felt good. He came back in there, fought this guy, John Ryder. And basically, yeah, even though he won the fight and he dominated the fight and he beat the guy up, he still didn't look impressive. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. I don't care. But just like I said, he ends up fighting Berlanga. Y'all going to go from saying Berlanga sucks to Berlanga's a good fighter, Berlanga's this and that. That's what y'all do. My job is to bring the boxing news. My job is not to sit here and praise any one fucking fighter. I give credit where it's due. But I'm telling you, I don't care what the fuck y'all say. It's always the same thing. They try to bring you back against different guys. We'll make this guy mandatory. Who the fuck determines that? You tell me one fucking person that you heard sitting talk about, yo, I want to see Robert Hellenius versus AJ. Or I want to see Robert Hellenius versus Tyson Fury. I want to see Robert Hellenius versus Joseph Parker. I want to see Robert Hellenius, you know, versus uh, 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 um, Deontay Wilder. He already fought Dylan White back in the day. I think he fought Yusora too back in the day. And this is an older, washed up, 
journeyman version of this guy. And even at best, he was okay. Wasn't no world beater, but he, he, was, he was okay. He was an okay fighter. And all of a sudden, because he wins three fights against who? Against who? Okay, so Jarrell Miller just came back. Forget the guy, the name of the guy he beat. But he didn't have like three fights that nobody fucking knew about. So if you look at the ranking systems tomorrow and Jarrell Miller is like number two or number three, he earned that? Huh? If they announce next month Jarrell Miller is a mandatory for Tyson Fury, he earned that? Because he have a little win streak that nobody gives a fuck about? So why is it when John, John, the John, well, why is John Roddy and Canelo situation so hard to understand? Because you're a fucking fanboy. That's why. That's why. He ain't earned shit. And you need to be ashamed of your fucking self. Because your motherfucking ass ain't talking about no fucking John Ryder either. It's just because you don't want to admit or feel like you're tainting Canelo's win. That guy is no world-class fighter. Stop lying to yourself. Raleigh Romero is not a world-class fighter. Canelo Alvarez is the champion at 168. He's not going to fight Benavidez. He's not going to fight David Morrell, okay? And the only way for him to make sense at fighting Bevel at 168 is if he's putting the straps on the line. He's not going to do that. So if he does go up to fight Bevel at 175, he's still the champion at 168 after Bevel dusts his ass off again. You understand? So he doesn't lose the belts, but he loses that fight. It's Bevel's belt that he showed up. So I believe he's going to fight Berlanga. You know what the funny thing is? I can say things, and it's not about predictions like, no, I, I, I'm no genius. Nobody is. That's not what it is. I just look at what's in front of me. Logical shit. Every time I say something and the shit comes into fruition, you little sour, butt-hurt motherfuckers, y'all just hibernate. A few of y'all to say, damn, Aries, you was right, which I don't care about that. But instead of acknowledging, like, I understand why he's saying what he's saying, no, y'all don't like the fact that I don't filter what the fuck I say because I'm a man. Okay, simple. I don't dance on eggshells. You guys do. But you talk all this tough shit, all this bullshit on your little typing your little messages in, you know, while you're wiping tears from your eyes because I'm saying something about the fighter that you love. At the end of the fucking day, he does not want to fight a guy like David Benavidez because he's a fucking threat. He doesn't want to fight Morrell because he's a fucking threat. He has every fucking thing to lose, even with the rematch clause. Now you're trying to get your shit back. He does not want to fight these fucking guys. Otherwise, that's who he'd be fighting. He wasn't talking that Mexican shit when David um, Benavides had the belt at 168, was he? No, he just clearly didn't want to fight him. Then he got stripped for not making weight. Then all of a sudden, he takes a visit to 168. Oh, but we're not, we just going to act like that didn't happen. I don't care how much you like a fighter. I'll tell you, I want to see Anthony Joshua beat all the other heavyweights. But you hear me break Anthony Joshua's shit down too, right? You hear me call out the shit that I feel like he should do differently. Or the way he's speaking about shit. You don't hear me walking around here butt hurt. I don't give a fuck how you feel about no fighter. Fuck Anthony Joshua. Fuck all of them. Fuck Floyd Mayweather. Fuck any of these fighters. You guys are the fans, not me. I'm not a fan of anybody. I just give you the boxing news. So, yeah, I may want to see a fighter do a certain thing, but I'm not fucking sitting up here like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nope. no, I don't jump up out myself. I just sit there, mm, this is a good fight. And, I, 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 hey, I can appreciate a good fight. That's it. So even you hear me saying, no, AJ and Wilder need to make this happen. AJ needs to absorb what he's learning from Derek James and, and the shit that he's picking up being in the gym with these other guys. And listen, if he win, he win. If he lose, he lose. How much longer? What? 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 what are you gonna put AJ on a, on, 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 on a three year period of hey man? Okay, we gonna give you three years to get your shit together? No, no. He's there right now with Derek James, and he needs to be on his A game. It's as simple as that. So when you hear other channels, oh, I don't, I don't think he should fight Wilder right now. Oh yeah, I, um, nah, man, I, nah, I think he should wait because uh, wait for what? I mean, I feel like if you're not improving, 
There's no reason to rush back into a fucking fight and get your ass beat because you're just not absorbing what you need to. What I'm saying, you went through changing trainers. Look, man, everything has some type of time, a time frame to where, okay, I need to get my shit together because at some point, I got to get in here with this guy. AJ wants the fights. What AJ needs to change his mindset. Otherwise, he'll go in there, and if his mind isn't right, I can't say what he's going to do once he gets in the ring, or any other fighter for that matter. But I'm saying, even in that, he's a fighter. This is what you signed up for. It's no comfort zone, bro. You got to go for broken, that motherfucker. And that's what I've been saying from day fucking one. So you don't hear me trying to cushion a fighter and shield them from fighting certain fighters. And not. No, we're going to wait. We're going to wait to to, 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 to wild like, you know, just old and can't do it no more, but still in there because he need money or some shit. No. No. So you don't hear me sugarcoating anything. And I stand on what the fuck I say. John Ryder has done nothing. And just like he just got his ass beat by Canelo, he's another guy that's going to fade away, not ride off into the sunset, fade away, because he had his shot. He showed he's not on that level. But you're too stupid to see that. And instead, you want to try to make it like, yo, Canelo's just that great. Okay. Well, then, so is Bevel. Because he can't beat Dimitri Bevel. And nobody, we know Canelo can fight, but hey, listen at this. At the end of the day, since you're talking all this shit about Canelo's this and like you, you act like he can't do no wrong, if he gets his ass whooped, then the next time, he, don't blame it on his age. Don't say nothing about wear and tear because not, you're not saying that shit now. So for the guys that say that Canelo looked better, no. I'm telling you flat out, Canelo looks flat. He looks like the same Canelo that fought, the same exact Canelo that beat Kovalev. That's what he's been fighting like. One punch at a time, and he only throws combinations when he gets you in a position where you're against the ropes, or if you land one and you basically stand and just put your hands up. That's what he does. If you watch him on defense, he stands there with his guard up with that high guard and just stands there. He doesn't move his head. He will try to move his head if you're throwing like a jab or shit like that, but when you come at him and you're throwing power shots, he just puts his hands up and stands there. Wave you to come in, all this shit. No footwork, okay? Slow fucking feet. He depends on you to make mistakes. And basically, he capitalizes on mistakes that you make. That's what Canelo's been doing. So when he fights a smart fighter that can go to 12 rounds without tiring, he's going to always have issues. He's going to have issues, especially if, if, if they got a good chin. Because if you watch him fight, that's how he's been fighting. So when people are saying he's declining, it's like, you could say that. But at the same time, I feel more it's like, nah, he's been figured out. Not exposed. No, figure it out. It's not hard. Watch what I listen to what I'm saying and watch him. But in your mind, he's Superman. But he's Superman 3.0. Kryptonite can't even fuck with him. No. This is not even about me rating Canelo or rating Raleigh or any of them for that matter. It's just the, the, the people that they're fighting. Okay, so to rate them is saying you are fighting guys that they put in the ring with you, right? But yet they're not on your level. But the word mandatory, oh, that's what make it acceptable. Okay, right. Well, then, again, then you can't fucking sit here and say that but that was his mandatory, but then defend Raleigh for not wanting to fight this guy, O'Hara Davies, because nobody knows him. So fucking what? Again, nobody knew this fucking Barroso guy either. And he ends up in a title shot. And you mean to tell, wait, wait, so you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that a Regis Prograde and other guys like that you know, that that's not the fight you'd rather see Raleigh have? Yeah. So 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 wait. Do you think that Regis Prograde, a Josh Taylor, you think guys like that want to fight Barroso? No. No. This was handpicked. And Raleigh just fought in front of 2,000 people. This was handpicked. So all the Raleigh fans that sit there and make excuses, no different. No different. And he went in there and was losing. So yeah. Think before you fucking talk. You guys swear you talking and teaching, so you ain't teaching nobody shit. All you doing is speaking as a fucking fan. He did this, he earned this shot, but you can't fucking name nobody he fucking beat. You gotta go Google that shit. Or go pull up his fucking most recent fights on YouTube. That's what you gotta do. That's what the fuck I had to do, because I didn't know who the fuck he was. No, no, I didn't know no fucking Barroso. I'm like, this motherfucker is only 40 years old. 
Yeah. Isn't it just <laughs> funny how he's done nothing else in the division? That nobody that, that 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 really did nothing, but you could see that the guy was a decent boxer. And it goes to show you that Raleigh Romero, just like I said, is not a world class guy. And the only thing advantage he had over Tank Davis is his his physical size. And the fact of the matter is, Raleigh's a strong fighter at 135. You know, he got power. But at the same time, Raleigh Romero, overall, not having the physical advantage, the size advantage over someone, no, you, you, see, the, you see the difference. You see the difference. He, 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 I look at it and say, every fight is different. And even if you struggle in the fight, it's a fight. But when you talk like you're better than what you are, it starts to fucking get old and people want to see you lose at that point. Because you're talking and you're fighting guys that you should beat. So when you're picked, when they pick up an opponent for you to look good against and you struggle, don't matter what the fans say, don't matter what you say. The fact of the matter is you didn't do the job the way it was supposed to be done. Simple. Simple. Stop getting on your knees and acting like a bunch of kids. Getting on your feelings over a man. You don't have to agree with what I say. But talking about that keyboard warrior bullshit, shut the fuck up. Because if we was face to face, you wouldn't say none of that shit. And I know for a fact you wouldn't. And you know for a fact you wouldn't. Just like you see me creating content, you don't see what I do in the gym. So you don't know what the fuck I'm capable of doing. So to you, oh, this guy Aries, he's big swole motherfucker. Oh, yeah, you don't know what the fuck I do, but I do. So stop talking all that bullshit like you you some fucking, you're not even, you don't know nothing. I can tell just by your childish fucking rant. When you guys talk about fighters, always remember, a fanboy is defending the fighter. A fucking fight fan is defending the fight game. I'll defend right and wrong. Simple. So I don't care if it's a fighter I want to see win. I don't pull no punches with nobody. You guys are the ones who are selective with who you want to see being talked about in a certain way and who you don't. I don't fit that fucking criteria, man. I don't do that shit. And there's nothing fucking hard about it. That motherfucker didn't earn shit. All right, he didn't earn shit. He earned nothing. He was selected. Just like Manuel Char was selected because he's paying a sanctioning fee. All right? Dominic Brazil didn't earn shit. He was selected to be mandatory. And that's factual. What the fuck did he, who did he beat? Bermain Stavern did nothing. Chris Ariola didn't do shit. He was selected. Okay? He is in a title eliminator. Who how do you put Chris Ariola in a title eliminator? When is the last time he fought before he fought Andy Ruiz? And against who? Huh? He earned nothing. Robert Hellenius earned nothing. That's cause you dumb motherfuckers don't understand the difference with being selected with earning. He didn't earn anything. Yet. Undefeated guys, again, like Frank Sanchez, huh? Huh? Jared Anderson, those guys, they didn't earn nothing, but Robert Hellenius did. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to get that shit out. And I'm talking to all the dummies, all you smart dummies. You know so much and talk so much shit, but you guys debunk your own bullshit. Because one minute you're saying one thing, the next minute you're saying something else. But because it's a different fighter, you don't see the difference. Same bullshit. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of all you fucking haters. And I'll catch you motherfuckers on the next video.